Hi everyone, I'm Shaylin here with Read Z. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about writing in first person point of view. So this is a follow up to a recent video we did on omniscient point of view. We're going to continue on talking about all of the main popular point of view choices. So omniscient, which we already covered, first person, third person limited, and second person. We're starting with first person, which is a very popular point of view choice in contemporary literature. You see it extensively in categories like YA, where it makes up the majority of published works. But even in genres where it's not the norm, like in fantasy, you still see successful first person novels. First person is where the narrator, typically the protagonist, is telling the story directly to the reader from their own point of view. So if you're reading a story where the main character is referring to themselves as I, as if they're speaking to you directly, then that would be a case of first person. It's a widely used and loved point of view. So let's start by talking about some of the qualities and benefits of first person before we touch on some of the common pitfalls of this point of view. The first benefit and probably the most widely recognized benefit of first person is that it creates an immersive and intimate reading experience. While other point of views can certainly feel very close, in fact they can often feel just as close as first person, the inherent closeness of first person where the protagonist is literally telling you their story and speaking to you directly makes it a very intimate form of storytelling. Even though you can still feel very close to a character in third person, the inherent quality of first person where the character is speaking directly to the reader makes it feel very close because the main character is confiding in us, they're speaking to us directly. This can make first person feel honest and personal. So especially if you're wanting to write something with a very intimate feel where it's very close to the inner world of your protagonist, First person is often a great choice for that. First person is also a great choice if you want to create an unreliable narrator. First person is an excellent choice if you want to create questions or intrigue around the reliability of your narrator, which is a little more difficult in third person because the character isn't consciously telling the story to any specific person. It's a lot harder for them to lie to the reader. They can lie to themselves, they can misinterpret events. But it's quite difficult for a third person limited narrator to consciously lie to the reader because they're not aware that there is a reader. However, a first person narrator is telling the story to you or at least to someone. And so they can consciously lie and manipulate the events, making first person narrators ideal if you want to explore unreliability. Now, it's also fair to say that pretty much any first person narrator is inherently a little unreliable. Every person has their own biases and their own perceptions of events. And when you're writing in first person, you're really tuned in to those biases and perceptions. So pretty much any first person narrator is going to be a little bit unreliable, but some to much greater extents than others. If you want to write an unreliable narrator, and that's a technique that interests you, I'll leave a link to our video on unreliable narrators in the cards and in the description. If you want to write a deeply unreliable narrator that makes the reader second guess what's truth, what's fiction, or what's exaggeration, first person is the ideal point of view to use. The next quality is that it provides a narrower scope. This can be both a benefit or a drawback depending on your intended scope for your project. If you want to write something super epic and sprawling that follows a giant cast of characters over a very long period of time, that will be harder to do in first person, not impossible, but harder. However, if you want to write something with a more limited scope that's more zoomed in on a single character, first person is often ideal for that. And a lot of the time, the limitations are what make us most creative. It's sometimes the limited scope that scares people from trying first person because they only have access to one character's perspective. A lot of the time though, what limits us is also what forces us to be the most creative. Being limited to just one character's point of view forces you to find ways to convey all the information through this limited perspective. The next great quality of first person is that the prose style is character driven. Because the main character is the narrator, the prose itself becomes a form of character building. The prose style and tone can actually be used to reveal your main characters worldview, backstory, and personality. The prose and the word choice is informed by and also informs your character. These things are intrinsically connected in first person, which means that you're actually building your character through the word choice. But you can see this across the board in any well done first person narrative 
where the voice and the word choice builds the character in every single line. And finally, you can get creative and play with the modes of first person in a lot of interesting ways. There's so many ways you can get creative with first person point of view. You can try things like first person witness, where the character telling the story isn't actually the main character. This lends an outside perspective on the events while still being rooted in a first person narrative. You can also try writing in multi-point of view first person where you have multiple different first person narrators which allows you to expand the scope of your story while still staying rooted in first person. Or you can even try something really experimental and fun like first person omniscient where you have a first person narrator but they're all knowing like your typical third person omniscient narrator. In first person you're picking such a particular and specific lens and angle towards the story. The character you choose to be your narrator can really change the effect of the narrative. So if we look at uh, To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee, Scout, our protagonist, is a child and probably not the most obvious protagonist for the story because the main drama and plot of the story isn't actually unfolding in her world. It's unfolding in the courtroom among all the adults. But it's the specific angle she's able to see the story from as an outside observer and a child that makes the story so interesting. So those are some of the qualities of first person. Let's talk about some of the common pitfalls. These certainly aren't things you see in all first person narratives. They're just common mistakes that writers can make when they're trying their hand at first person. First of all is an illogically all-knowing narrator. So like I mentioned earlier, one of the main issues writers encounter in first person is scope. Sometimes you want the scope to be larger than your first person narrator can reasonably provide. Your first person narrator can't know what others think or feel, so they have to infer it somehow. One common mistake that can happen in first person is the narrator showing or telling us things that they simply don't know. For example, telling us other characters' emotions. So for example, I arrive five minutes early and Carla is thrilled to see me. Our first person narrator isn't Carla and doesn't have access to what Carla is thinking or feeling. So if Carla is thrilled, we have to show that somehow through Carla's actions, their body language. What do they say? Do they run out to meet the narrator? Are they jumping up and down? Are they shouting, I'm so excited to see you? Without that information, without that showing, the narrator is relaying information that is beyond their scope. So you have to be very careful with scope in first person and what is within and what is not within the scope of your main character. And if you're trying to show us something that is not within their scope of understanding, showing a way for them to infer it. The next common mistake is multiple point of views that all sound the same. Now, first person can certainly have multiple points of view. You see this especially in a lot of YA, where you'll have multiple first person narrators in alternating chapters. But it can also lead to one of the biggest problems with first person narratives, which is all of the characters' voices sounding the same. If you're going to use multi POV first person, you have to put a lot of work into developing each character's voice so that they stand apart. Ideally, the reader should know whose point of view they're reading, even without a label. You only want to use multiple POVs in first person if it's really necessary for the story. Otherwise, you're likely to run into this issue. And if you do feel that it's the best mode for your story, put a lot of work into developing those voices. We've got a video on developing character voices so that they sound distinct. So I'll leave a link to that in the cards and in the description. The next common mistake is awkward self descriptions. One thing a lot of writers struggle with in first person is integrating descriptions of their main character. This can be issues with physical descriptions and can lead to cliches like the character describing themselves by looking into a mirror or even difficulties with the character sharing background information about themselves and can lead to a lack of development for the protagonist because the writer doesn't know how to organically fit all this information into the narrative when the main character is talking about themselves. You really have to use your show don't tell skills as much as possible to develop a main character, show us what they're like through their actions. But also don't be afraid of exposition when needed. Writers often fear exposition a lot more than necessary. As writers were really taught to fear exposition and taught that it's the greatest sin, but ultimately a short bit of exposition that relays important information that we need to know is probably going to be much more effective and much less intrusive in your story than trying to awkwardly fit that information somewhere it doesn't go, for example, in dialogue. This is a very common mistake where writers are taught to fear exposition, so they try to fit that exposition into the dialogue 
because they think that that's more organic or somehow less intrusive, but it's actually quite a bit more awkward. If there's information you need to tell us about your main character, just tell us. A little bit of exposition, if it's well written and well placed, will actually help your story rather than hurt it. The next common mistake is filtering too much. Now this can happen in any point of view, but it has an especially jarring effect in first person. Filters are constructions that describe sensory experience and separate the narrative from the image. So for example, I saw a flock of birds, or I heard the concert from over the hills. You want to omit these constructions as much as possible for more direct, concise imagery, as well as smoother prose. The thing is, in first person, the main character is telling us what they're experiencing, so if we're seeing an image, we know they're seeing it, right? Everything that's described, the main character is seeing. Every sound that's described, the main character is hearing. If they're not hearing it, they can't describe it, right? Because they're limited to their own scope. So adding filters kind of adds distance to a point of view that should be inherently close, so it can feel pretty jarring. Instead of saying, I saw a flock of birds fly above me, it would just be a flock of birds flew above me. You can cut the I saw, the I heard. You pretty much never need the phrase I think in first person because the main character is literally thinking everything, right? It's all their thoughts. And finally is no self-editing. Now you might think that I mean the writer not editing the book. I actually mean the protagonist not editing their own narrative. In first person, and this especially happens in first person present tense, it can be really easy to fall into basically a play-by-play -play, where the main character just tells us every little detail of every little thing they do. Because they're telling the story and it's happening in real time, it's harder for them to self-edit their own narrative and parse what's important versus what's unimportant. First person narrators can have the tendency to give us a lot of unnecessary action beats just because technically they are doing those things, so it feels realistic. So you want to be really careful to help your protagonist self-edit their narrative and cut all the action beats or little details that aren't necessary that might sneak into your first draft because you're basically describing things as a play-by-play. -play. So that's all for this video on first person. I love first person, it's probably the point of view that I write in the most, especially first person past tense. I just find works really well for my writing and I really enjoy writing in that. Uh, point of view, but I'm a huge fan of first person. Um, it's definitely a favorite of mine. I would love to hear what your favorite books in first person are or books that you just think handle first person narrative really, really well. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any new videos from us. We've got new writing, editing, and publishing tips every Tuesday and Friday. Until next time, bye!